Hi guys, in this video we're going to go over the most salient points from MA222 or any other introductory statistics course that you took. Okay, so these are the bare minimum items that I need you to know in order to progress with the course material that we have in MA321. Okay, so let's start by defining some important terms. So first off, let's start at the very top, statistics. So statistics as a field can be defined in many ways. We'll go with the definition of statistics as the collection, organization, and interpretation of data for summarizing and drawing conclusions about a population based on a sample. So two words that came up there that are important for us to take time and define separately are population and sample. So a population is any precisely defined group on which we want to measure something. Okay, So depending on what research objectives you have, you would define a group of either people, animals, objects, time periods, whatever it is you want to study as your population. Okay. An example I use a lot in an introductory stats course is I use the college that I'm teaching at and say I'm interested in studying the students in this school. And so for me, that's my population. Because I'm interested in studying the students in this school, I've defined my population as students in this school. Now what is it that I want to measure? on these students? Well, I could be interested in a lot of things. I could say, for example, I might be interested in learning about the GPA of students at this school. Okay, So for me, I've kind of made it very clear what my research objectives are. Learning about the GPA of students in this college. Okay, So I've defined my population and also I've defined what I want to measure which is my variable. In this case, my example was uh, GPA. Okay, so let me use some different color for examples. So my example for population was this college. So whatever college we're in, that's that's the one. You can visualize all the students in that college as my population and what is it that I want to measure on them is my variable. That's something that varies from per student in this case to student. So I wanted to measure GPA. Okay, and I want to learn about the GPA of students at this school. Okay. Now the problem in my research is going to be collecting the GPA information from all the students in the school. It's way too time consuming, costly, and sometimes just physically impossible for me to get every single person in my population's GPA. Okay, So I run into kind of a physical limitation or physical problem of collecting all the information that I'm interested in to go forward with my research. So from this problem, I need a solution. And therein, the sample presents a solution. So a sample is simply defined a part of a population, a part of a population. Okay. Now if we're careful, we don't want to just take any part of the population. If I'm studying the GPA of students at this school and I'm interested in learning about um, the average GPA at the school, for example, I might be uh, 
it might be pretty dumb for me to take uh, a sample of the smartest 40 students and use them as my sample okay ideally what I want is I want my sample to be representative so we want a representative sample we want a sample that is representative of the population because what we learn from this sample we want to take and generalize to the entire population remember the whole point of taking the sample was because we didn't have enough time or resources to collect all the information from our population of interest so ideally since we have to settle for a sample we want that sample to be representative so the best way to assure that we get a representative sample is to take what's called a random sample okay and what a random sample is going to ensure us is that we end up with a representative sample. So how does it work? A random sample gives an equal chance to every member of the population of getting selected into the sample. So let me say that once again. So every member of the population that you're interested in studying, whether it's this college, students in this school, penguins in the Antarctic, widgets coming off an assembly line, whatever it is that you whatever population you're interested in studying a random sample what it will do is it will give an equal chance to each member of the population to get selected into the sample this way there's no it minimizes any biases that might arise from taking a convenient sample or some other form of sample okay so ideally we always want to take a random sample and from all the exercises that we do uh, this semester, we're going to assume that our sample was taken in this fashion. Okay. Okay. Some other Im important terms and concepts that's important for us to clear away before we jump into our course material are the variable. So we mentioned a variable here. An example of it was the GPA. We could be interested in measuring other things like number of shoes you own that's a variable in other words it's any characteristic whose value may change from one individual or object to another so if we're talking about people GPA number of shoes uh, your political affiliation your blood type your gender um, you can uh, your income uh, which state you were born in etc these are all examples of variables and in statistics especially in a course like this where we're doing use we're doing applied statistics our variables are always going to have some kind of um, meaningful uh, interpretation or context to the real world so we're talking about real variables um, not just X's and Y's and Z's that you're used to seeing when you hear the word variable. Okay, so some more terminology here. We have a couple types of variables that we need to kind of at least generally understand. We have numerical variables or quantitative variables. These are variables that take numbers as values so for example uh, of the ones we've talked about GPA income number of shoes even it's a count so that's a number these are examples of numerical variables today's temperature is a numerical variable your height your weight so forth your age To distinguish these 
from variables like gender and blood type political affiliation we have a category called categorical variables sometimes also called nominal variables or qualitative variables these are variables that whose values take levels a specific a, a, a finite number of levels uh, so for example gender is either male or female blood type uh, there's probably many blood types but if I were to simplify here we'll have blood type a B a B and O I think those are the four at least that I know your political affiliation let me abbreviate that PA uh, fortunately we're all, we seem to be limited still to these three choices <laughs> so we have Democrat Republican independent okay so at least we have this third kind of level we'll call these the levels of our categorical variables so gender has two levels male and female blood type has four levels and political affiliation has three levels and you could think of other examples like your hair color your eye color um, the letter grade you get at the end of the semester what state you were born in etc okay another important concept is the observational unit observe sorry Vational unit, which I end up abbreviating all semester as observation, just simply OBS is my abbreviation. And this is basically who or what we are measuring. So our variable is what we're measuring. Our, an ob an observational unit is who or what we're measuring so we've already seen examples where we're measuring people so it could be people more specifically it could be students it could be elderly people it could be a specific demographic of people customers of a certain um, uh, industry it could be animals right if we're a biologist then we're, we're uh, we might be studying animals plants if we're a botanist um, if we're in business, uh, customers, uh, so those are people too, but just a little more specific. Uh, if we're in manufacturing, we might be studying some widgets coming off an assembly line. So it, anything that we're, who or what we're studying, anything that we're studying, if we can clearly understand what one unit of that is, then that's an ob our observational unit. Okay, so, so here's some very important terminology that we're gonna I'm gonna expect you to kind of have fully um, thought about reviewed and uh, I'm gonna use these this language namely these terms that we've discussed here uh, fairly often throughout this semester so be comfortable with this language okay and uh, this was meant to, to serve as a brief review of all this um, items that you should have seen uh, in some shape or form in your introductory stats course. I'm also going to do a part two right after this where I'm going to start talking a little bit more detail on some of the more um, technical uh, language that we might have seen as far as talking about the measures of central tendency and measures of spread that we've discussed, that you've discussed in your introductory stats course. So I hope this was helpful in bringing some of this uh, back to the front of your mind. Okay, continue to watch part two to, uh, of this review series of videos.